before I read this paper, I didn't know it was possible. Or at least I didn't know it was possible in aphoria. I was associating aphoria with strictly supervised deep learning. And from this paper, I learned that that does not have to be the case. So let's dive into it. I'm talking about the paper, Artificial Intelligence-Based Image Analysis Can Predict Outcome in High-Grade Serous Carcinoma Via Histology Alone. And the keyword histology alone, uh, this is a paper by Anna Ray Laurie, Sami Blom, Tuomas Ropponen, Annie Virtanen and Oli Mikhail Karpen. So the tumor they worked here with is high-grade serous carcinoma. It's a type of ovarian cancer where five-year survival is less than 50%. And in this type of cancer, unlike many other cancers, the pathologic diagnosis doesn't really give any prognostic or predictive information. In other cancers, you have several molecular tests, or maybe there are things associated with better outcome. And here, there's nothing. So the authors decided to check if AI, if convolutional neural networks can help with finding the features that could be predictive of better outcome. Why did they do it? Because deep learning based image analysis has recently been able to predict outcome or identify morphology based representations of underlying molecular alterations. This is a big deal in the computer vision world. It is not the first time this has been attempted, but it is the first time that I hear about trying to attempt it in an explainable way by combining supervised and weakly supervised deep learning. So let's see how they did it. I love this image. This image basically explains the whole paper. You don't have to read the paper. Just check out this image, but let me walk you through it. We're talking about a training set from 30 patients. So that's not too many patients. 205 slides were used, but even though it's just 30 patients, the results are really mind blowing. So first, a pathologic review was done on slides selected from patients who had this type of ovarian carcinoma. And these patients were from 1982 to 2013. And here we are starting with annotations with our classical computer vision workflow. What did the pathologists annotate? Where the tumor was, if there were any artifacts, and necrosis. They basically did annotations for semantic segmentations of different regions of the tumor, trained the CNN, and they visualized the results. So they wanted to have the tumor region trained for, and the rest was background. So classical, normal, supervised deep learning workflow, you provide annotations and you get segmentation. But then what happened, they trained another convolutional neural network. So this one is CNN number one, and this one is CNN convolutional neural network number two. So let's see what happened in number two. We have the same patients and we know the outcomes of those patients. So what were the outcomes? So the treatment is adjuvant platinum chemotherapy. And then you either survive long time or not after this chemotherapy. So these were basically the labels. One label for those who survived long, and long means over 18 months. And the other one was for those who survived really short, which is less than six months. So platinum free interval long and platinum free interval short. And they basically labeled the whole slide as this very label. So trained in aphoria gave this class one name and the other class the other name. And they let the network figure it out on the slide and they visualized the results. Uh, what did they visualize there? So this is the CNN2. They visualized CNN2 results with masks high confidence pixel mask. So basically where the network had high confidence that an area was providing information about short survival or long survival. And they were called digital biomarkers. And I love it because you can visualize it. You can show where the network is taking this information from. So what happened then, a pathologist went in and they annotated the digital biomarkers. So they annotated things that were morphologically coherent and were corresponding to those high confidence pixel masks. And another network was trained. So we have third network, one, 
two, and three. And they visualize the output from the third network. But this was already after refining it with annotations. So what happens in the last step? We test. And in the test set, there were 22 slides and neural network one was combined with neural network three. So neural network one detects uh, where is the tumor and excludes all the unnecessary stuff like necrosis, connective tissue, or whatever they didn't want to have there. And neural network three classifies into those two digital biomarkers, the long platinum free survival and short platinum free survival. And we visualize and quantify results. How do we quantify? We check the percentage area for each of the biomarkers. And based on that, we classify. This is short survival. This is long survival. And we can see that we have four slides misclassified. The ones with the stars are misclassified. And this still gives a sensitivity of 70% and specificity of 91%. This is a really good test. If you look in the clinic, what are the parameters for the test that we're routinely taking in a doctor's office? These are pretty good numbers. So I hope the research on this is continue and that one day this is going to make it to the clinic. And another exciting thing about this very thing, making it to the clinic, is that there is no other biomarker. In other types of cancer, you compare with other molecular biomarkers and then you kind of, even though you have similar results, you have to compete with something that's already standard of care. Here, there is nothing. So this is perfect. I'm so happy I read this paper. I did learn a lot and I hope you do too. And I talk to you in the next episode.